Hey everyone, in this video we're going to wire up this 10 pin Molex connector so that we can monitor the state of charge on our eight cells in these modules. So let's get started. So the tools that you're going to need are a soldering iron, a Phillips screwdriver, some wire cutters, I like these because the, the cutter is right on the end, some wire strippers, and some shrink tubing just to clean that up, make sure there's no short circuits inside there, a multimeter, and a lighter to shrink down the shrink tubing. To get started, there's six screws on the outer cover of this, and then there's two screws that hold the Molex connector in place. So let's go ahead and take those off with our Phillips screwdriver. Okay, so once you take the outer screws out, you need to remove these two because it's just holding the connector in. Alright, so once you get that opened up, there is a slot right here that this wiring falls into. So you can just pop that out of there. And then this Molex connector is still connected to this fan. So I just use a screwdriver and push this little connector out. Let's see if I can get a better angle on this. that just pops right out of there. All right, now this front cover is free, so you can move that out of the way. All right, so sometimes this BMS is going to have a screw over here on the right-hand side that holds it in place. It's just a Phillips screw, so you'll have to remove that. This one already had it removed, so it's just kind of dangling here. Um, what I do is I pop the connector for this Molex connector out of the way, pop that out of here, and you can move this to the side for now. And then I use a Phillips screwdriver to pop this off of here. All right, when you remove this top cover, it doesn't really just slide off. You have to lift up on the bottom of this and pick it up over a lip and then it'll slide down. So you can remove that and now you can see the BMS in here. There are four screws holding this in in each corner. So I take those out and remove this BMS from the plastic cover. Okay, so now that we have those four screws removed, we can remove this BMS from the plastic cover and set that off to the side. All right, so the way that I did this was actually to leave this connected up here because these red wires are gonna be the ones that we want to check and see which trace goes to which cell. So to give myself more room to work, I'm going to peel back some of this electrical tape and pull this wire loom back. Okay, so now that we have these wires exposed and a little bit easier to work with, we can kind of pick through them and see which ones we need to use. Uh, we can start checking for our main battery negative. So the way that I did this was actually to use all of these pins here. Um, the lower connectors on this, the, the bottom row of wires is on a lower set of pins. And then this top row here is on this outer portion here. So if you actually flip this over upside down, all of all of these traces right here, let me see if I can zoom in on this, all of these traces right here are going to be connected to all of the wires that are coming in via this connector. So what we can do is take a multimeter and check all of these and see which one of these have continuity with our main battery negative. There is a sealant on here, uh, it's kind of hard to get off, I think that's the general idea but you can usually use a multimeter and just kind of poke through there until you make contact with these. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's try, so these three are empty. If you look at this connector, there's three empty slots here. So we can move in three from here and start checking some of these. Nope. Nope. in there. Oh, there we go. 
So it looks like we have continuity on this pin right here, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight pins in on the top row. So when we flip this over, this is our top row, and then this is going to be the bottom row. I know it's upside down right now, but that's because we're looking at the connector from the other side. So if we count in, in eight from this top, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to give us this red connector all the way to the right. So this one right here. So the way we can double check that is to cut this and see if we have continuity from this wire to the main negative. So let's do that right now. All right, so we know that this is our main negative for the battery. And so we can wire this into whichever one of the connectors on this Molex connector that we want to be our main negative. So I'm going to use this top left as my main negative. And if you flip this over and look, it is the black wire right here. So top left, black wire. So I know that I need to wire in that connector I just stripped to this black wire. So I'm going to cut off my fan connector. And then I'm going to strip this black wire. Okay, so it's really important to make sure you strip a decent amount of this wire back because you want to, to actually wrap these between one another and make sure that you get a good solid uh, solder connection. One thing I should mention before we go any further is that you can take this connector here that has your Molex connector on it and peel all of this electrical tape off and this wire loom and just cut these at the end because we're going to use uh, a continuity tester to make sure that we're selecting the correct pin on this for the wire before we wire it into these balance leads here. So let's go ahead and peel all this off here. Okay, so now that we have all of that peeled off of here, there is some shrink tubing here, but I'll leave that. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut all of these and get rid of this connector. Alright, so now those are ready to go. And we can strip these one at a time as we need them and wire them into our balance leads. One thing you need to do is decide which pin you want to be which cell. So in my case, I'm going to wire it up from the top left and make it my main cell negative, or my main module negative my first cell positive, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, in that order. You can do this any way you want. You can do one negative, one positive, do two, three, four, five, through this way, and then down, left to right, however you want to do it. Totally up to you. Uh, kind of one of the, the cool things about doing it yourself. All right, so I'm going to do my best to show in detail how to wire these together for soldering. Uh, so first thing you want to do is slip on some shrink tubing. All right, and I'm gonna strip this back a little bit more because I want a lot of this wire exposed. All right, I'm gonna do my best to show this in detail. So what you wanna do is cross these over one another and then I hold this left side and wrap this wire around my black wire. So just bring it around like that and just try and wrap that around it as many times as you can. And now you still have this left side. So you hold the right side and try and wrap that around the red wire as many times as you can. So now, even just pulling on this, they're, they're together pretty well. So it's, it's always better to send that electricity through wire-to-wire -wire contact than the solder, because solder is actually not that good of a conductor. So I hope that showed up pretty well for you guys. If you have any questions, just let me know. All right, so now I'm just going to take my soldering iron and rest this wire on here. Let it get hot. shouldn't take very long. And just add some solder to this. And you'll see it wick in there. And that's all you need to do. Let that cool down for a second, 
and you can slide your shrink tubing over that. And focus. Take a lighter and down at the blue the blue portion of the flame. It's a little bit cooler. It doesn't burn the, the shrink tubing as bad. Go ahead and shrink that down. And that's the first connection. You just need to do eight more. All right, guys, so I cheated. Uh, you can see here that this is my main negative that I just found with the multimeter. If you count over eight, you're going to come up with that. Uh, I went through and checked all of these other red connectors, red red wires. So you have one, three, five, and seven positives for this top row going to the left. And then you have your two, four, six, and eight positive on the bottom row. So I'm just going to go through and wire all these up. You can figure this out. Uh, yours should be wired exactly the same. All four, well, actually all six of mine so far have been wired exactly like this, so I'm fairly certain that every one of these modules are wired this way. So you can use this as a cheat sheet if you want, um, or you can go through each individual wire, cut them one at a time, and just check them and see if they have continuity with each one of these in the actual module itself. So your one positive actually touch the one positive on, on the terminal and touch this wire and see if it has continuity and just go through all of these and double check them as you go just to be safe. But I'm going to go through and trust this and wire all of these up now. Okay, so I went through and stripped all of these wires off my Molex connector. So the next wire that I want to wire up is my number one positive, which is going to be the second one in on the top row, second one in from the left. So I'm going to use my continuity tester and put one probe in there, and I'm just going to go through all these different wires and see which one of them beeps. Oop. All right, so right here, this is going to be our next victim. So I'm going to go through. I know that I'm going to bend this over so that I know this one's the wire that I need to use. And I can go through now and cut this next wire, strip it back, and go ahead and solder those together. So I just finished up wiring everything and so with this Molex connector if we go to the from our battery negative to this this prong here we should get continuity and then from our battery negative to here we should get around 3 volts, 6 volts, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, and 24. So let's go ahead and check our voltages across these and see if I wired this all up correctly. All right, so first let's see if I have continuity between my main negative on my connector and my battery. That's good news. All right, so we have continuity there, so that one's wired up correctly. Uh, now I'm going to go through and check all these. I'm just going to read off the voltages. All right, guys, here we go. Let's go for our number one and our battery negative, 2.91. Let's go to our cell number two. 5.82, 3, 8.83, cell number 4, 11.74, cell 5, 14.61, cell number 6, 17.51, cell number 7, 20.41 and cell number 8 which is our module voltage is 23.24 ish and just for the fun of it I'm going to measure right here on the module I'll be scared if I get something different yeah 23.24 so good to go there so it looks like I wired this up correctly uh, according to this diagram so now my Molex connector and this diagram match each other and I did this the same on all four. All right, so I can pull this BMS out of here now. And I 
put this wire I tried putting this wire loom back on there but it's kind of a pain so I'm going to be honest I just left it like this um, judge me if you want but <laughs> that's all right so now we can put this cover back on we can put our Molex connector back where it's supposed to be because we're done in here this is wired up correctly um, one thing I do want to point out originally I was going to use this as a balancing connector but these I figured could probably carry an amp safely um, but seeing the kinds of problems that people have been having with these modules and needing to move significantly more than one amp. I realized that this is going to have to be just for monitoring. I can use this to plug in my BMS or I can just use it for little cell monitors. They have those 8S uh, IDGT monitors. I'll put a link for that. Those are kind of handy. They try to balance, but on something like this, it's not really going to do a whole lot. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to throw that out there that this is not going to be able to balance these. It's only going to be for monitoring. You're going to need something more significant than this for balancing on these modules. One other thing, I brought these fan connectors out and basically all I did was figure out where I wanted to put this here. And then I just used cutters and cut a little notch into this plastic right here so that they would fit through when I put this cover back on. So I'm going to do that now. It was not the plastic, that was my hand. I'm getting old sucks. All right, so we can break that out of there. Now this, when we put this cover back on, this can come out of here and we can use this for an external control for our fan. So now I can go ahead and put this module cover back on here, so I'll do that now. All right, guys, so I have this on my module negative right now. I'm just going to go through and double check everything, make sure it's good to go. And right now it just fell out because why wouldn't it? Everything's still good to go. Didn't really expect anything to fall apart putting it back together, but it's always good to double check stuff and make sure you have everything, everything done correctly. Okay, so now I just need to do all of that all over again for this bottom module and I will have these two done and ready to go. So I did this before I even put a charge on this because I want to make sure that I can monitor each individual cell. So I'm guessing this video probably got pretty long, um, but I wanted to go through and make sure that I showed everything that I had to do with this to wire that up. It's kind of time consuming on the first one, once you get the hang of it, it's really not that bad. It, it moves along pretty quick. One more thing real quick. DigiKey has the other side of this connector, this here. Uh, these fit in here really nice, and they have the connector and the pins. You're going to have to crimp the pins uh, onto the wire and then lock these the wires into this. So I just wanted to throw that out there because Amazon has kits, but they're like $10 for a pair. And you can order these. They're like $0.60 cents a piece. The pins are about $0.09 cents a piece. And you just have to put a little bit of extra work in and do it yourself. So I just wanted to throw that out there. I will leave links in the description for the part numbers for that. All right, everyone. Thank you for watching. Hit the like button if you found it informative. Definitely comment if you have any questions, suggestions, or feedback. Subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you on the next one.